parenting. Just a short time ago, police in Virginia wrapped up a news conference on the body found there, and cops now say they're fairly confident the body is hers. The skeletal remains were discovered this morning in a remote area on a farm just 10 miles from the concert arena in Charlottesville, Virginia. 9.53 this morning, the Virginia State Police uh, was notified by an Albemarle County resident of a discovery that they had made on their 700-acre farm in the southern part of the county. While operating a tractor in the field, the owner uh, came across skeletal remains. Morgan Harrington, again, to refresh your memory, vanished in October. She was last seen leaving a Metallica concert. It's October 17th. Uh, it's so sad, so sad for her family. We had her parents, Jill and Dan, on. We were hoping and praying for the best. And now, worst fears looks like they've uh, come true for us. Call in, one eight seven seven tell hln We've got some Facebook comments already. Pam writing, the evil just keeps preying on women. So, so sad for them and their families. Uh, this from Lynn. My prayers go out to her and her family. They loved her, and she loved them. It was a close-knit family. Um, the, the mom helped her pick out her clothes for the concert. It's just so sad. Um, joining us to talk about this, welcome our experts, Steve Rogers, Detective Lieutenant, Nutley, New Jersey Police Department. Also back with us, investigative journalist Michelle Sagona, and you can always get updates on these stories at our website, michellesagona.com. Michelle, I know you've spoken with authorities throughout the day. What is the latest? Again, we want to find out who did this to Morgan Harrington. Well, at this point, Mike, what we'll wait for is for the medical examiner to release exactly how Morgan died. And once we learn that, this case may, in fact, shift to a homicide investigation. As a matter of fact, that's what investigators uh, just mentioned about an hour ago in their press conference. Uh, we do know for sure that her body was found on this 700-acre farm. I did speak to the owners of the farm, uh, Nancy Bass. Uh, her husband, David, was actually the one that found the body. And as he was riding his tractor throughout the farm earlier today, this area is about eight miles away from one of the main highways, I-64 in that area. Uh, there is a subdivision nearby, but uh, this farm it doesn't really see very many trespassers. Uh, sometimes there will be some folks that come back there and walk around. But if anyone, uh, you know, wh whomever did drop her body off there, or however she ended up in this particular area, it may be difficult to find witnesses as to as to what happened. Great point. Let's bring in Steve Rogers on that point. Steve. Let's talk about the challenges investigators have here. As we, as Michelle's pointing out, we talked about this is a remote area, a farm. It's a hay field. When Morgan's body was uh, dumped there, probably that hay was about waist high. It snowed since then. So how challenging is this going to be as an investigator? Well, it will be challenging, but with the technology we have today, uh, there are they will be able to find out uh, the cause of death, which, as Michelle said, will lead them uh, perhaps to a motive. And, and, and the other question is this. Uh, as Michelle said, somebody had to bring that body there. Was it one person or two uh, individuals who brought the body there? So they're going to uh, make that a crime scene. They're going to gather all the evidence they could. And, of course, Mike, having that body helps put the pieces mm -hmm. of this puzzle together. Yeah, let's get a call in. Greg is with us in California. Greg, your thoughts on this sad development? Yeah, thank you, Mike, for having yeah. me meet you and your professional panel. And to the family, I'm glad I got through. I can speak for everybody in the world. We're behind you guys. I lost somebody in my life very close. Your daughter's in heaven. We're, we'll find who did this. And my question is, will they be able to have any cameras on the highways in that area that maybe can go back to the, a month ago or so and maybe can find out at that time has it um with any cars that we might can help the investigation and to once again my family are, are condolences all around the world mm -hmm. we're with you great well put and good question though let's go to steve rogers on that see we're talking about three months a little over three months what kind of camera surveillance maybe a camera at an intersection uh, is is that how possible is that and how helpful could that be it's very possible possible and could be very helpful uh, uh, what the police will do Mike is try to retrace any steps that they believe a criminal suspect took to get the body to that field so if those steps are retraced on a highway where there's cameras very helpful okay another call Sheba is with us in Illinois hi Sheba your thoughts here hi, hi hey. Mike. my thought is this this was an inaccessible hay patch so there was either a gate there, and they usually have a, a, a chain around them and a lock. So they need to look close to home, close to this area for this poor girl's murderer. Good point. Now let's get Steve in on that one. Okay, Steve, yes, it's a remote area. 
But is that helpful? Because you figure there's not a lot of traffic, and maybe there's some kind of evidence from the particular people who did this. Well, well i got to tell you, your caller brings up a good point, because most of the time we do begin at ground zero, close to home. So, again, that's where the police are going to focus their attention. And I question myself, you know, there, there, it is a remote area. Perhaps it's someone who's familiar with the area, yeah. believing there'd be no witnesses. Yeah, excellent point there. Let, let's bring in Katie Beck. She's been covering this for Prime News affiliate WTVR. Katie, you're there. Uh, any new information from authorities as we begin to piece this together? Well, obviously, today was a huge break in this case. They've been investigating for months. Anywhere you go in Charlottesville, there's going to be flyers hanging with Morgan Harrington's face on it. The people here are very well aware of her disappearance and have been on high alert. Obviously, today, that search of the 700-acre farm and the remains that were found is a huge break in this case. Investigators say they have always treated this case as a homicide, and they're going to continue to do so until they find the killer or killers. They say that they expect new leads and new tips to come in. They've already received over 600 tips that have basically given them no information. Now they have a body. They have something to work with. So they expect that this case will be moving forward and the investigation should have new light here. Katie, how are people handling it? I know the authorities somewhat dealt with it at the press conference, but let's face it, if you're living in the Charlottesville area, you're a little uneasy now knowing whoever did this is on the loose. Well, I think the people here know that Charlottesville is a relatively safe area. Uh, th there is obviously some concern that we've got a perpetrator or perpetrators uh, on the loose. I think the really concerned person is obviously the Harringtons. I was able to speak mm -hmm. to Morgan's father, Dan, on the phone today as he was headed to Charlottesville with his wife. Uh, we actually did an interview with him at their home in Roanoke not too long ago, uh, just talking about the type of girl that Morgan was and, uh, and all of the possibilities that go running through your mind when you have a missing child. Uh, they were obviously here today and when they were on their way, I spoke to him on the phone. He said, Katie, this is a moment that we have both been dreading and waiting for because obviously the pain of not knowing, uh, the pain of having no closure is something that we want to point it, put an end to, but mm. obviously they never wanted the news that they were going to be finding their, their daughter's remains here no. in Charlottesville. Katie, how was he holding up? It must be so difficult. He's obviously was talking to me through tears and, and sobbing on the phone. Uh, they are a very strong couple. When we visited them at their home, uh, they talked about a lot of the family rituals they have. Uh, they're very close. Morgan worked uh, for her father over the summer in a medical office, um, and they spent a great deal of the summer together. He said this was um, a big growth period for Morgan, that she, she stayed home a lot. She was a 20-year-old who often uh, had a very busy social life, but this past summer, she did spend a lot of home with her, uh, time at home with her dad. He said he felt that was sort of miraculous, that he had that last summer with mm -hmm. her. Uh, those last mm -hmm. few months, he thought maybe fate had intervened and brought them together. Oh. Feel, feel so bad for them, Jill and Dan Harrington. Katie, thanks so much. We're going to continue our conversation, and we're going to go back. We're going to go back to the last day that she was seen alive, October 17th, at this Metallica concert. Go back over the details again. How does she end up outside the arena? Who was the last person to see her?